30 for your next ride on Maramoja Taxi. You get 30% discount. 30% discount. And CT, if you load any amount on your Maramoja wallet, what do you get? 50% of what you've loaded. Aye. So if you do your maths, doesn't mm. matter. you don't have to be good at maths. Mm. You just need to add 50 and 30 mm. and you come up with 80. Imagine. So you're doing very well here. Very, very well. Mm. Very, very well. You have more money. You're paying less. Mm. I mean, can things get any better? Can't. There's absolutely no way. And Maramoja Taxi is available in very many major cities. Nairobi, major city. Mombasa, major city. Nakuru, major city. Kisumu, major city. Eldoret, new major city. <laughs> Naivasha should be major city, resort city. <laughs> I mean... Have you said Nakuru? Yes. Okay. Major That's city. Yes. Mm. Mm. Can you imagine? I Somewhere. Can imagine. It's everywhere. <laughs> so download Maramoja Taxi today on whatever app store you have. Play store, app store, what store, 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 for the apps. Go there, <laughs> download it. What do you look for? Maramoja Transport. Yes, Maramoja Transport Company. And mm. then there will be these apps. Look for the blue one. Mm. Mm? Very, very interesting graphics. Blue. Very good. Application is simple. Yeah. Name, phone number, email address. Yes. Finished. Yes. Then they tell you to proceed. Plus. Then you proceed. Mm. Mm. And that's it. Mm. It's Thursday, the 18th day of January 2024. And everybody's lips in this country right now, the judiciary, the judiciary. Mm the judiciary. Our Justice Thursday conversation is going to be with the Vice Chairperson of the Judicial Service Commission, the Honorable Mashari Anjaru. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Sir. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Yeah, thank you very much and I'm so pleased to be here. Mm. I listen to Spice FM a lot and uh, I congratulate you as a team because you've done a very good job in terms of uh, keeping the public appraised and uh, engaged in all matters that relate to our political discourse. Mm. And uh, you've become a very respected station. In fact, I, I dare say that right now, due to your consistency, I would consider you to be the number one station in the country today. So, the judiciary has spoken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my personal view. <laughs> that's my personal view. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it's done. No, that's it. Done. <laughs> but I'm a fairly good mind, so <laughs> I really have done a good job in making the right assessment. Asante, Sarah Masharia. Hey, that shot. Eh? Yeah? In I am not looking at the memo one. Yeah, yeah. Look at <laughs> Look at now our guests. Yeah. Kawaida City. Yeah. 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 Great yeah. minds, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's great, yeah. it's great yeah. minds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I know what you're saying. Mm. <laughs> I hear what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Now, City uh, always goes around Africa. Uh, it's couched for proverbs from one African country. And throughout the week, he gives us one proverb per day. This week, he's in the country of Nigeria. And uh, he's going to give us proverbs. You've been to Nigeria, Mr. Mashari? Uh, I've not been, but I follow a lot. You what know a lot Nigeria. about Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the discussions I've had recently about uh, independence of the judiciary mm. is with the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, a very respected guy called Akpata. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can see the interest is always to compare what's happening in our country with other jurisdictions, particularly yes. within our continent. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this week, the proverbs are from Nigeria City. Yes. You'll give us a proverb in your pidgin English. Yes. And then the Nigerian, Nigerian Kenyan will mm. give us a proverb in proper pidgin. And then it will be your job, Masharia, mm. to translate it from pidgin to English and then give us your interpretation of it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Ah, yeah. So let's start. City, go. go. I, 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 start. You I have, have the baton. All your marks. I have to apologize before saying this because I'm certain yeah. I may not pigeon this thing adequately. Mm. But nonetheless, yeah. as they say, mm. here goes. Okay? Mm -hmm. One day, breeze go blow and foul Yanish go open. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> <laughs> One day, breeze go blow. One breeze day. go blow. And mm -hmm. after breeze go blow, mm -hmm. foul, 
Yanish. <laughs> Which foul? F O U L? F O W L. You know, in Nigeria, any foul is foul. Turkey, chicken, duck, so long as foul. We yeah. feed chop, I'm not foul. Mm. Perfectly foul. understandable. Okay. A bird. Yes. Mm. No, cook, one for cook. eating, <laughs> not pigeon. Oh, not pigeon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> go open. Go open. Now. Do. One day, breeze go blow, na foul nyash go open. Yanish becomes nyash. <laughs> One day breeze go blow. One day breeze go blow. Na foul, foul nyash, nyash go, go open. open. Sharia, are you anywhere close to understanding what? You, you, you know, for me, if it was something to do with chicken mm. <laughs> or uh, animals that you are used to, mm. I would have done a better job in, you know, <laughs> interpreting. In interpreting. But now, <laughs> remove, that I live to remove <laughs> fowl and say chicken. chicken. Remove fowl and say bird. Yeah, mm. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's a tough one. Let's stay with the judiciary. Okay. <laughs> okay. So fowl, fowl bird, Translated. and then yash is behind. Mm. So one day the mm. breeze will blow, yeah. and a bird's behind mm -hmm. will be exposed. You see, I would look at it this way, mm. that even as we continue um, attacking our institutions, uh, thinking that uh, we are, you know, we are okay because we are in power, mm. we are protected, we will damage these institutions, then a time will come because uh, the shoe will be on the other foot. And uh, the institution that you destroyed will, be not the, will no longer be there to protect, protect you. you. Mm. So we got to have an eye for the future even as we are dealing with the present. Mm. Hmm. So do you, what do you say? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a multiple yes. It's a many yeses. Yes, it is. <laughs> because there's something about the truth. It doesn't matter what you do. Mm. They say it loud. Mm. You can twist and turn and hide it and, and pontificate. You can do whatever it is you wish to do. But at the end of the day, and usually at the most inconvenient of times, mm. It will be there staring at you mm. and telling you, here I am. Okay. Yes. Now, but a vice chairperson, the Judicial Service Commission has come out to respond to what's been in the public domain. And this started with the president and then followed by other members of the executive and some members of parliament and some advocates and some litigants mm. saying there is corruption in the judiciary and not just, you know, um, few cases of corruption but there's rampant corruption in the judiciary that now the judiciary has gotten to a point where uh, you the judiciary is being used for political uh, expediency the judiciary is not serving the people it's not delivering justice you came out to respond those that didn't hear what's this response um my brother eric there is no institution in this country that can say it doesn't have challenges. I mean, we would be uh, burying our heads in the sand if we say that there are no challenges. But it is an exaggeration to say that there is rampant corruption in the judiciary. That is simply not true. Now, the timing of the discussions at this point in time, whether from the executive and say from the political leadership, is deliberate to achieve certain ulterior objectives. That is the simple truth because there is litigation in court if you look at the timing. And uh, of course, you know, the litigation is high octane, you know, that we can't, you know, again, lie to ourselves. And uh, it can't be that all these allegations that are being, you know, uh, brought forth with a lot of, uh, you know, energy when the cases are pending in court, uh, it can only be that uh, the executive or the politician, so to speak, would want certain uh, decisions made in their favor. Mm. So how do you do it? You, as much as possible, you know, make pronouncements so that you can intimidate the judges mm. and they rule in your favor. Because if you are saying, and this is now to the politicians, because many of these politicians are elected, and in fact, when they are, when they are campaigning, uh, they are very emphatic about the rule of law, that when I take over power, I'll be ensuring that this country is governed by rule of law. Mm. Now, and we know about this country that uh, the moment they, were, they came into power, there were also petitions. 
in fact among all the politicians there were many petitions mm. whether it's the presidency whether it's a parliament whether it's you know county governments mm. and these petitions were determined by the same judges none of them you know the ones who or none of them said that judiciary was corrupt as they were making those decisions so if you now turn around and say that the judiciary cannot be trusted and is corrupt then in effect what you are saying mm. is that uh, you know you are able to achieve your decisions in your favor through mm. corruption because basically that's what you are saying mm. which is not true because uh, you know the judiciary was uh, praised for making decisions expeditiously and following the facts law and evidence mm. so you can't speak from the both sides of the mouth mm. that judiciary is corrupt when decisions don't go your way and judiciary is very good independent and respectable when decisions are made in your favor mm. so we accept as JSC that whenever there are challenges that relate to uh, judges and the uh, judicial officers we are there under the Constitution to process those complaints to process those petitions mm. and we do that all the time and it's in public domain mm. that action has been taken against judges action has been taken against magistrates mm. action again has been taken even against our judicial staff mm. in fact the 2023 alone uh, three judges were removed mm -hmm. uh, 2023 alone two magistrates were removed mm. uh, in the last two years we've removed 71 staff judicial staff and you know those are very many people being removed mm. there are many other petitions that are being processed but see at the end of the day whatever issues we have against an institution that is as important as the judiciary it is how we address it because you see at the end of the day you do not want to attack such a critical institution in public domain without providing evidence because we don't dispute that one can have an issue mm. but it's how you address it and we are not shutting down anybody from bringing the issues for instance if you have evidence against a judge or a judicial officer what is the right thing to do prepare your petition or your complaint and you see you are knowledgeable enough to know how to present it mm. because you are surrounded these politicians they are surrounded by a team of very competent people people who are knowledgeable they can they have a battery of lawyers all the time so they'll present those that documentation to the judicial service commission and we'll have you see we are we are it's incumbent upon us to ensure that we also give a hearing to the person against whom this are complaint so due process because it is not a discretion on our part as JSC mm. to choose when to follow due process and when not, not to. to. Mm -hmm. We have to follow due process. Okay. And that due process mm. has been, it is the same due process that has been used in respect to other judges and judicial officers who are even removed from office. So let us stick to the law. Bonajero, it's in, when things are in the public domain, on the public arena for folks to speculate, mm. it's kind of you know different when members of the public can say well this is a witch hunt on the judiciary um we the certain judgments are looked to go in certain directions and that's why things are being said mm. but for that sentiment to come from the jsc in the manner in which you've presented it just now to actually say that uh, perhaps there is a desire for certain cases that are in court right now waiting for decisions to go in a certain direction and that is why we hear or we see this onslaught on the judiciary that's very different coming directly from the jsc itself i'm speaking in my individual capacity when i say it's not rocket science you see sure. i'm also a lawyer yes mm. i'm also a lawyer yeah and uh, and uh, uh, and i'm not uh, a fly by night lawyer mm -hmm. i've now practiced over 30 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> it is not difficult to deduce mm -hmm. because you just need to look at the timing mm. and you see it, it can't be as i'm saying that before you have no issue with the judiciary mm -hmm. but now when you're unhappy with certain uh, you know de decision that are being made or these decisions are pending and you see one thing that um you know a statement you said uh, you know in a in very absolute terms there is sub judice rule mm -hmm. that when a matter is pending in court you don't even discuss it sure now this is a rule that has been there for centuries mm -hmm. now you are busy discussing these matters and the judges are also busy writing their decisions how do you expect them to 
dispassionately make a decision mm. you know and every day you are attacking them mm. Mm. and you know these are these people are also human beings they are human beings mm. now and you expect them to make a decision and you see now the kind of politicians who are attacking the judiciary they are not the backroom you know small politicians mm. this uh, powerful people who are occupying very high offices. They are not fly by night politicians. Yeah, yeah. they also <laughs> not fly by night. That's the hard reality. Mm. So, and you see, when it comes to matters of leadership, there's also responsibility that is expected, not just of political leadership, but all leadership mm. in whichever sector that they occupy. This is a certain way you're supposed to conduct yourself, this is a certain way you're supposed to pronounce yourself, so that you can be able to inspire confidence in the institutions. You can inspire confidence in the public. Mm. You see the danger we are now facing as a country. Mm. Can you imagine an investor, somebody wants to invest in this country, and you hear an institution being attacked, being branded corrupt, that it can be, you know, and coming from high offices. So the, how would you expect that investor mm. who you want to come and help in building your economy to come to your country? How will you sell that your country? Mm. Because these same politicians are the ones who are supposed to go. They are the biggest marketers for our country. You know, in fact, when they have huge budgets, they say that uh, we are using this budget to market our country. Mm. Now, you see, investors don't just, you know, it's not just what you tell them in one sitting when you're talking to them they look at the track record they look at your pronoun they live in google they'll do research what is it that you are saying about the you know the the organs of your country one of them being judiciary because if there's no rule of law mm. how will you put in your money expect that when there's a dispute mm. that it can be heard in an unbiased manner that only the law facts and evidence will apply and there will be no undue influence based on extraneous you know issues that will end up taking away your investment mm. so these political statements coming from leaders who are manning very critical institutions against the judiciary will actually destroy the institution. Okay. They'll destroy the country, ultimately. And it is the Kenyans who suffer, which is why I'm saying that there has to be responsibility. And you see, these are not people who have inability to provide the evidence if they feel that a certain judge has been bribed. Mm -hmm. It's very easy because you have the ability to be able to do it and present it to the institution that is supposed to deal with it, mm -hmm. then now you can blame JSC. If JSC, if you present the evidence and action is not taken, now you can say, we've done our part. This other institution is not doing its part mm. and therefore this collusion. Now you can be able to say confidently that the institution is not working because we've done because we have taken our complaints. But now you've not done it. Mm. And what you're doing is that you're prosecuting your case in Barazas. Mm. You are prosecuting it also in a manner that you are disadvantaging the judge because remember these judges yeah they can't respond these people have no ability you see a politician has ability to be able to he has the platforms they have the platform because the, every weekend every day they are addressing somebody somewhere now a judge can only speak through their pen and you see it would even you can it would it would be so wrong for judges now to start responding to these people mm. the moment they attack they also respond in equal measure me that's not you. what's expect, expected of them these accusations have not only come from the politicians they have also come from seasoned advocates <laughs> and jurists yeah who have said maybe we need another round of judicial reforms maybe we need to look back at what happened in the days of the ringera you know radical surgery of the judiciary mm -hmm. maybe the shara draw you know vetting of all judges and magistrates. maybe we need a fresh round where we can relook at the conduct of each individual judicial officer probably so have you heard that from members of the bar you, you, you see um my brother eric when you talk about the vetting and, uh, you know, when you talk about the Rengera surgery and all that, that was pre-2010 constitution. We didn't, the way the judicial service 